What is going on guys? My name is Kenji, welcome back to the channel. I hope it's not the first time you're watching one of my videos, but just in case it is, I'm a final year medical student and a biomedical science graduate studying King's College London. And guys, I just realized I literally have no videos whatsoever on my channel about how to revise anatomy in medical school, which is quite shocking because anatomy is probably one of the most difficult things you will ever go through in medical school. And hopefully on this video, I'll be taking you guys through all of my kind of hints, tips and tricks to actually ace anatomy in medical school to make sure that when you actually reach your clinical years, all of your anatomy is done and you know it very, very well. So I further ado, let's go ahead and get started, starting off with the first tip about how to do well in medical school in your anatomy classes, which is use the right resources. Let's go ahead and get started. So when revising anatomy, it's really, really important to use the right resources that suit you. And I think suit you is probably the key word here. If you're someone who actually learns um, anatomy through videos, use video resources. If you like reading books, do that. If you like coloring in pictures, do that. In regards to myself, I personally don't really like actually reading books for anatomy. I probably own zero books in all of medical school and have no anatomy textbooks whatsoever. The way that I learned all of my anatomy is either in the dissection room, actually on campus, dissecting bodies, or actually using online resources such as Ken Hub. I'll talk to you guys a bit more about what Ken Hub is later on, but essentially the reason why I like Ken Hub is that they have all the information that you need to know about the entire human body on there. And they also use a bunch of videos uh, on there as well, which are really good at explaining and breaking down anatomy into the simple concepts. They also have loads of quizzes on there as well. And I think quizzes are super important when actually learning anatomy and testing yourself. And I just like their style of actually teaching and learning anatomy. And that's pretty much how I actually learned a bunch of anatomy throughout medical school. But essentially the first tip is to try and find the right resources that suits you. So if you're someone that actually learns anatomy through videos, don't spend time, you know, reading books because that's not going to work for you. That's the first tip done. Let's move on to the second one. The second tip that I have for you guys when learning anatomy is to try and understand things step by step. Anatomy is so complex, there's loads of different layers on layers, and it really, really is important to actually break things down to the basics, the very, very basic principles, and then start from there and build up. Before you jump into any sort of topic and start memorizing, make sure that you first and foremost start by understanding the big entire picture. So focus on key points and try to understand how they all fit, how they all work together in the bigger picture and the grand scheme of things in the human body before you actually start to memorize and commit things to memory. Before learning all of the big complex ideas and anatomy, try and break things down to their foundation. You really won't be able to understand the complex um, aspects of anatomy without truly understanding the foundations first. So before jumping onto the more complex things, start by the building blocks of anatomy, start by the foundations, and I'll just briefly show you guys what I mean. If, for example, I was learning the cardiovascular system, if I went straight to the bottom over here and I started trying to actually learn all of the major arteries, the veins, and nerves of the human body, if I jumped straight into that without actually understanding the basics of the cardiovascular system, I would be so confused and none of that would make sense. So what I would recommend is if you're actually going to try and understand the cardiovascular system, start with all of the basics first. So maybe learn about the capillaries, maybe learn about how we have different types of circuits. So the pulmonary circuit, the systemic circuit, learn about how we actually divide blood vessels into veins and arteries and capillaries. And once you actually build up that solid, strong foundation and you understand the basics, then you can actually move on to understand the more complex aspects of the circuit circulatory system like the, um, the arteries, the veins, the nerves of the body and all of the more difficult aspects of anatomy. So whenever you're starting off with anatomy, if let's say for example you missed the first you know, lecture in anatomy and you were sick and you joined the lecture again on the fourth lecture, make sure you go back to that first lecture understand the basics and once you truly understand that then slowly work up from there until you reach the more complex aspects of it and that's why i think ken hub is really really good because it starts off with the basics if you actually go here and let's say for example you're on anatomy you click on basics and then you let's say go to the cardiovascular system um, over here down below it will start off from number one being the very very basic you know aspects of the cardiovascular system they will give you a really nice video to actually explain the whole entire process in order I'll then move on to the more difficult aspects of the cardiovascular system and also they'll actually provide you with a quiz to make sure you actually understand, you're actually able to remember what they're explaining to you. And it really moves on from there in a systematic order, starting with the most basic ideas in anatomy and then working up from there. Once you then understand the basics, you can kind of go back to the start as well and then move on to the different aspects of the human body. And by the way, if you guys actually want to try out Ken Hub yourself, I actually managed to get a 10% discount for all of you guys who want to try it out yourself. I highly recommend 
recommended. And if you guys actually change your mind on Ken Hub, they have a no questions asked seven day money back guarantee. So if you actually don't like it anymore, you can completely get your money back. But I really would be surprised if you guys actually didn't get any benefit from it. So you can try it out for yourself with a 10% link down below. And actually they also have a free version of Ken Hub as well. So if you don't want to pay the money, that's completely fine. They have a free version on there, which is free forever. And I would highly recommend you guys check that out as well. That's the second tip. Let's move on to the third one. The third tip that I have when learning anatomy is to actually start to use mnemonics. So once you actually understand things conceptually, once you understand how things fit together, you then need to obviously start committing things to memory. And sometimes it's actually really difficult to remember names in anatomy because the majority of times they have really random arbitrary names. So my advice to actually try and commit things to memory would be to use mnemonics. So just to give you guys an example of how I remember the rotator cuff muscles in my shoulder, back in my earlier years in medical school, I came up with a mnemonic called SITS, so S-I-T-S. And from the day that I came up with that mnemonic, I've been able to actually remember the rotator cuff muscles ever since then. So I think it was supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres, mi teres major, teres minor, I think. But essentially that mnemonic I made allows me to stimulate my memory and try to remember those really random weird names that you just need to know in anatomy. And as well as that, I also have different mnemonics, for example, in the carpal bones. So all the carpal bones in my hand, the mnemonic I remember is some lovers try positions they can't handle. And using the first letter of that kind of sentence allows me to remember all of the bones in the actual uh, carpal bones of my hand. And that is another super, super efficient way of actually committing things to memory, not just anatomy, but also generally medicine is to try and use mnemonics as much as you can. And normally what I actually do is I normally just go onto Google and I'll type in, let's say for example, um, rotator cuff uh, muscles mnemonic. And oftentimes, someone has already done the hard work for you. It can actually give you a mnemonic that they made. So as you guys can see over here, someone actually came up with SITS. Maybe I didn't actually come up, come up with it myself. But as you can see, SITS is the mnemonic we have for the rotator cuff muscles. And that allows you to remember all of the rotator cuff muscles. You can also do that with pretty much any aspect of medicine. If you're not able to come up with a mnemonic yourself, basically go onto Google, type it in, and the chances are that someone has already done the hard work for you and can give you a mnemonic to stimulate your memory to actually remember the random words that you need to know. That's the next tip I have for you guys. Let's move on to the next one. The next tip that I have for you when actually learning anatomy is to try and put things in a clinical context as much as you can. And what I mean by clinical context is to try and understand how and why memorizing and understanding this concept will then allow you to actually become a better doctor. Not only does it allow you to remember things better, but it often also allows you to highlight the most important aspects of medicine, of anatomy, because if you remember those specific points about how you can actually apply that as a doctor, when you're actually a doctor on the ward seeing patients, being able to remember the clinical relevance of what you're learning will then really allow you to apply that knowledge as a doctor one day. Now, obviously you may not be able to actually apply a clinical context to everything, but in the majority of times, there often is a clinical context that you can commit to memory. So for example, if I was learning about the nerves that actually supply the uh, upper limb, that supply the forearm and hand, what I really will be asking myself is why do I actually need to know which nerves supply the forearm? You know, is that an arbitrary fact or is that actually clinically important? Now, the reason why I will need to know the nerve supply of the um, upper limb is because if, for example, I see a patient in the a &E who comes in with something we call a claw hand, so kind of like this, with their fingers kind of stuck down here, a classical claw hand, by studying what the ulnar nerve controls in the actual um, upper limb, I will know straight away that if a patient has a claw hand, and therefore I can conclude that they probably have a damage to the ulnar nerve in the actual upper limb. And that one fact is an example of how I learned the innovation of the upper limb and can still remember it today because I know that as a doctor, knowing the nerve supply of the upper limb and how it actually ends up affecting patients really enhances my ability to remember all of the nerve supply and how the nerves kind of present in a patient in real life and as a doctor. So to summarize, whenever you're learning anything anatomy, try and think even deeper and think to yourself, why am I learning this? Why is this important for me in medical school? And why will it be a doctor for me in the future when treating my patients? That's the next tip I have for you. Let's move on to the second last that I have. The next tip I have for you is that once you actually understand all of the concepts in anatomy and you're actually trying to commit things to memory, as I mentioned, you can use mnemonics to try and stimulate your memory to understand these concepts, to try and memorize these concepts. But as well as mnemonics, probably the most important way of trying to remember the anatomy is to actually test yourself. And that's where Ken Hub also comes in. You can use a number of different methods to actually try and test yourself. You can use flashcards. You can use online quizzes like what we have on Ken Hub. You can literally use whatever method you're normally used to to test yourself. But I think testing 
reminding yourself is really the most important aspect of trying to commit anything to memory. Now, I'll give you guys an example of how I personally use KenHub to actually do this. So for example, if I was looking at the anatomy of the upper limb, what I'll do, as I mentioned, is I'll watch these videos to try and explain um, the different concepts to me. And I'll try my best as I'm watching them to try and actually remember them and keep them in my memory. Other than the normal quiz feature that comes with KenHub, what I really like about it is you can actually create custom quizzes for you and actually preparing for your exams. So for example, if you wanted to test yourself on uh, all of the body surface anatomy, you can add that there. You can add in skeletal system, you know, more uh, specifically the muscular system as well, and all of these different areas of the body, and then click um, refine selection. What it will do is then you can go in and actually choose different areas of the body more specifically that you want to actually be in your quiz. And then you can go ahead and click start quiz. And based on what you actually chose, it will then go ahead and create a specific custom quiz for you on the concepts that you actually want to learn in time for the exam and then as you can see here this is the uh, quiz that they created and hopefully i'll be right by clicking that and this custom quiz will be tailored to you based on what you want to learn if you wanted to what you can also do is actually get images of the different you know areas of the body you want to learn and then use your apple pencil on your ipad or maybe print it out and try cover the actual areas that have the answer and then just test yourself and see if you can actually label diagrams yourself and testing yourself is super super important i'd recommend using kenhub if you don't have kenhub then feel free to just go on google images and try print off things yourself but testing yourself is a super important concept in learning anatomy. Let's move on to the final tip that I have for you guys. The last tip that I have for you guys is not really to do with learning anatomy, but also super important, is that when you're learning all of these things in anatomy, it's absolutely impossible for any medical students to really be expected to try and understand, memorize, and learn all of the concepts of our human body. It is it is really, really difficult. Unless you're revising for your surgical exams to become a surgeon, it is super difficult. So don't put too much pressure on yourself to try and remember all of the details in every aspect of the human body. Depending on what university you go to as well, you may not actually have that many anatomy questions in your exams. Now, personally, at King's College London, we actually didn't have that very much anatomy in our exams. And of course, learning anatomy is not just about passing exams, it's about becoming a good doctor. But if you have the anxiety of, you know, not doing well in anatomy, don't worry about it too much because what's even more important than passing exams is to understand anatomy in the long term to become a better doctor. But to be completely honest with you, being in my final year of medical school now, I probably don't remember all of the details that I learned anatomy in my first and second year of medical school. What I do, however, remember is all of the building blocks, all of the strong foundations that I need to know to become a good doctor. I also really remember all of the clinical relevance as I mentioned to you guys before. I may not necessarily know all of the nerves supplying every aspect of the hand, but I know that this claw hand means there's an ulnar nerve injury. I know all the really important clinical aspects I should know to be a doctor one day. What will be expected of you when you actually go on towards in medical school is you need to have a strong concept and understanding of the body as a whole. You know, obviously remembering the major bones, maybe the major arteries and veins as well. Those key concepts are super important to fully understand but all of the specifics about neuroanatomy and all of the deep, deep, complex areas of anatomy is not necessarily something you have to remember all of the time 24-7. So take all of this with a pinch of salt. Obviously, learn anatomy, enjoy yourself, try to enjoy it as much as you can. I really did enjoy learning anatomy. Try make it fun as well. If you want to go online and buy books or images that allow you to actually color in different areas of the human body, if that helps you learn and that makes it fun for you, do that. If you like watching anatomy videos on YouTube or on KenHub, go ahead and do that. Do whatever makes it really, really fun to allow you to properly understand anatomy. And finally, and most importantly, if you don't actually understand and get 100% in all of your anatomy exams, don't be too hard on yourself. Enjoy the process. And I promise you, you will become a good doctor. And that's pretty much all of my tips that I have for you guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment down below. As I mentioned, if you want to try out KenHub for yourself, then you can get 10% off by clicking the link down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed as well. If this video has added any value to you, please give a thumbs up. And if you guys like all of these medicine videos, then here are a few more than you guys can check out before you leave this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.